Hello and welcome to Face Check. I keep promising a Gentechi.net tutorial, so it's about time that OP delivered. It's not a difficult system to learn, uh, but if you're a brand new player, it's definitely not the easiest way to learn. Uh, the game uh, isn't hard coded through every step, it'd be very, very, very difficult to achieve that. And so it will allow you to perform illegal actions, and it's up to the players to police the rules. So if you don't know the rules, you're definitely going to struggle. Uh, if that's you, then definitely make sure that you understand the rules of Netrunner and particularly the timing structures and the things that you can and can't do um, before kind of stepping into the, the online world here. Uh, watch the Fantasy Flight video that uh, talks you through the steps. Um, or, or any of the, the number of other videos out there and if you can get to a, a local game night uh, definitely do that learning from a, a real life person just makes everything so much clearer uh, within a couple of games whereas on here things are still going to be quite difficult uh, for you but assuming you know how to play Gentechi itself is, is very easy uh, to, to get along with it's browser based you don't need to download anything all you need to do is head on over to www.gentechi.net uh, nothing more difficult than that then you're going to need to sign up for an account um, I don't think you can play without being logged in and uh, in the top right you can sign up uh, I already have an account so I'm just going to log in uh, face check there game remembers me uh, if you don't know how to sign up for an account is as simple as putting in your email address and choosing a username if you can't manage that, then Netrunner is probably not the game for you, uh, but I'm going to assume that everybody can sign up for an account. So here I'll log in. When you log in, uh, you're going to have one of the default avatars. Uh, let's see if I can point out one in the, the chat room here. Uh, you'll see my avatar is the, the face check logo, uh, but these ones with just the pixels are uh, default ones. If you want to change that, and I presume at some point you will, uh, it's done via Gravatar, that's globally recognized avatars. Uh, again, you need to sign up for an account, you upload an image, uh, and use the same email that you've signed up for uh, with with Gentechi.net, and then that will automatically pull through. Give it, give it a little bit of time for that to happen, might not happen straight away, um, but that is the way of doing it. You'll then maybe notice uh, a number of other sort of comment systems or login systems also use this uh, and it'll be tied to your account. You simply come to Gravatar and you can uh, log in and change your, your uh, avatar whenever you want. So this is Gentechi.net. It's not the, the main bulk of it. This is just the uh, chat room. Uh, here on the left, uh, if you're familiar with the chat rooms, this will be quite uh, sort of familiar uh, to most people. You can choose which channel you're in here, uh, general and then sort of territory specific ones. Um, the general chat room is the most active. Uh, America, well, all of them actually see a little bit of use, um, but nowhere near as much as the, the general chat. Now there's not enough people on Ginseki.net for this to be uh, a massive issue. You're not going to have to go find um, you know, specific groups of people. Everybody talks in the general chat at some point, and if you ever need to get in touch with someone via the site, that would be the way to do it. Uh, if you're going to uh, talk to somebody, all you have to do is click on the, the box at the bottom. Uh, if you want to talk to somebody in particular, then use the at symbol and then their name. Uh, that'll let them know that you're talking to them directly. Um, the players or the people you need to look out for particularly in chat are Mintran. He's uh, the site owner and runs the site uh, and his username is mtgred. Uh, and also Joel CFC25, very heavily involved. Uh, pay attention to them for updates and definitive announcements of what's going on. Uh, speaking of announcements, there's also the section at the top of the site uh, where the latest updates are posted. Uh, the most common thing that will come in here is a new version has been deployed. Please refresh your browser to get the latest version of the code. Uh, now that can happen sort of mid-game at times. Usually the server goes down for a little while. Um, but if you've not closed your browser and the server's restarted, hit Control F5 or Control RR to refresh your browser and get the latest version of the code. 
Uh, if you go along the top, uh, you'll see a number of, of menu options. Uh, the first one is cards, uh, and that's simply all of the cards for Netrunner. Um, pretty much up to date, up to D and D. Won't have any of the Mumbad spoilers yet, but then again, whenever you're watching this video, it, it'll generally be up to date, and it will also have spoilers um, if high res images are available. Um, you'll see there's actually alternate art cards. Uh, in order to get those, you will have to contribute to the site. Um, otherwise, you'll just get the, the default one. Um, I currently have 15 all art Adonises. Um, if I never see it again, I will be okay with that. Uh, the filter system on the left, you can search for a particular card or you can sort them. It's not as advanced as something like uh, Netrunner DB, but if you ever need to, to see a card, you can either just you can scroll through them all um, or you can search for a particular type of card if you're looking for something to put in your deck. Uh, I don't know if this is an aspect they'll, they'll develop out, but it's definitely a, a good way of listing just all the cards that are there. And... Uh, getting an idea of what you want. So, in order to play, you're obviously going to need some decks. Uh, I'm going to log out just for a moment again. Uh, and this will show you uh, the, the default deck builder. Um, the game comes loaded with the 2013 North American Championship winners and the World's winners. Um, this could probably do with being updated to at least 2014 and uh, as I record, uh, 2015 Worlds is currently taking place. The, the side event is today. Uh, hopefully we'll get a, a British winner um, for the main event. Uh, but if you don't want to make any decks, these are, are perfectly serviceable. They all work. Um, you'll just be missing some of the, the, the newer cards. Uh, let me log back in again so we can see my decks and I'll show you how to make one. So I'll just log back in. Uh, if you log in and you don't see your decks, give it a second. Uh, it sometimes just takes a minute to, to catch up with uh, where it is. Uh, but here is a list of all my decks. I don't know if there's a, a limit on how many you can have, um, but going back to uh, sort of August there when I, I first started face check, I, I moved all my uh, all the decks I wanted to keep over to this account. Um, to make a deck, you have a number of options. Um, let's say we were to make a new runner deck. You come in and uh, you're presented with a, a blank box. And this is one of the, the simplest uh, systems for getting a deck into them. Uh, you can name your deck at the top there. Um, you can then select which ID you want to use from a drop down. And then you just add cards. If you know the name of a card, uh, let's say you wanted to add self-modifying code, you just start typing, it comes up, you then choose how many you want to add, 1, 2, 3, well not 123, but uh, 1, 2 or 3, add to deck, and, and there it is. Uh, to make small tweaks, all you need to do is, is plus or minus to the cards, if you go back down to zero, it takes it out of the list and that's fine. But you see there's a, a big area here that's just a text box and one of the, the sort of great ways of just getting up and running um, with something a bit more modern is to head over to Netrunner D DB, uh, check out the, the deck list of the week. Uh, all you need to do, copy, highlight and copy the, the cards and then paste it into there and the game will parse that for you and you'll have a deck. Now obviously Kate's the, the same as, uh, what's her face, Haley, uh, in terms of influence and faction, uh, but make sure you choose the, the right one there. And you can name it, I don't know what that deck was called, uh, Novelist, all right. Might give this a try later, the Novelist, and i just make a note that's net deck, so. That's only for myself though, and then click save to keep it. That deck will now be available for you to uh, to play with. Uh, other options for adding uh, decks there, you can um, go over to something like Reddit. Uh, let's see what the latest deck somebody's posted is. Yeah, I think there's one here. Again, you can just uh, copy this. Um, oh, this is a corp deck. What's this called? No cool name. Ah, oh, it sucks. No cool name. Um, but exact same thing. 
So let's just cancel that. Let's make a new corp deck. Paste that in there. And that doesn't work quite as well. So in order to get around this, all you really need to do is get rid of the spacing. Um, now again, it's not the... It's not slow, um, you know, you've got yourself a deck up and running. You don't need to worry about the stuff around about it. Once you save it, that will disappear. Um, see if I can sort this properly. Unfortunately, my uh, laptop doesn't enjoy doing stuff whilst recording in 1080p. Um, there would be a quicker way of doing this. You could probably put it into Excel first or something and strip uh, or trim. Um, but let's just do it this way. Because as I said, it only takes five minutes and you can be up and running with a, a variety of decks very, very quickly. Similarly, I think you can take an ODB file, uh, an Octagon file, paste it in here and it will parse it as well. And then it was a... I forget what Genteki ID they were. Uh, RP. So, Jinteki RP, and there you go. So, the, the game tracks your influence, uh, tells you what you got there, make sure you've got the right number of agenda points. Uh, I'll just random net deck there. And save that. So, even if you've got nothing, very quick to get a couple of decks up and running. And if you want to get more into the deck building, or you have a, a specific deck, you can you can type them into the box, or you can build it somewhere else and, and paste it into here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that is the deck building aspect. Let's then go on to play the game. Uh, I'm going to turn off this hover zoom. Getting on my nerves now. Um, on the play page, you'll see all the games that are, are possible there. Uh, you can choose to watch games uh, if they've allowed spectators, or if the game is not full, uh, you'll have the option to join. Uh, you see games pop in and out. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create my own game. Um, and I'll just start by clicking on New Game. So you've got the option to create, or if you've decided you don't want it, you can cancel. Uh, in the title of the box, you see most are just the player name game. Uh, however, if you are wanting a private game, it's best to do it as, as Angelo uh, has done there and put private for the player that you want. Um, you can get away with just typing in private, uh, if you could type, and uh, that will do, or the player name. Uh, and that way, if somebody joins you, you you know they, they won't join you unless they don't read the thing and if you don't read the thing then you can just uh, kick them out uh, similarly if you're doing some super secret testing you can disallow spectators uh, so it's on by on by default to let people watch other people um, there's no real harm in letting them do it there was a bug a little while ago where people could uh, mess with your cards um, but mostly you'll just get a few people dropping in and out uh, watching maybe a, a couple of rounds and uh, if you get somebody sticking around for the whole game uh, they might have a, a chat with you as well. So I'm going to disallow spectators just for the again the purposes of this teaching video and I'm going to create the room. Um, so I can't stop anybody coming into here but I don't have to start the game if they join. So within the chat box here uh, you can talk to your opponent before starting. The you're not going to usually get a lot of chat in here. Uh, the only thing this is generally used for is if you have something specific with your deck that you want the opponent to know uh, beforehand, or if you don't want to play something in particular. Uh, if you can't fit it into the the title, uh, just explain in here. You can say, "Oh, I'm using you know Mumbai Psycho cards. Uh, once they're added, uh, they're not programmed. Do you mind?" or uh, something else is maybe not working at the moment, Cronus protocol is not working, so it's a real pain in the ass to do manually, um, so informing your opponent beforehand that you're playing Cronus protocol, um, and that gives them the choice of whether they want to continue or not. Um, if you're playing as the Corp, all you have to do is click on Select Deck. Uh, this will bring up all your Corporation decks that you've made. And you can choose one. Um, here I've built a single core Wayland. Uh, but if you want to play as the runner, just click on swap sides. And same thing, select deck, and you'll get the choice of all your uh, 
runner decks. Um, I'm going to show you the corp side of the game first, um, although both are very similar in how they function. So let's just use the, the Wayland single core. And then to start the game, uh, once you've agreed and everything, uh, just click on start. If you are getting harassed or you know you don't want to play that guy, you can always leave again. Um, if you beat somebody thoroughly, you sometimes get vengeance. <laughs> People trying to play you again, but maybe you don't want to play them again. Um, so there is start to begin the game, and this will load the uh, game proper. Now I'm going to zoom in. Just one more, maybe two more. No, two more, too much. One more is, is enough there. Uh, because it's browser based, you can uh, zoom in just by clicking Control Plus and Control Minus. Uh, as the game goes on, if you get to uh, the point where you're playing a, a turtle backs near Earth hub, your, your screen might end up looking something like this. You've got 100 uh, remotes going along the top there or along the bottom if you are that near Earth hub. Uh, if you need to zoom again back to normal, control plus zero uh, will reset the zoom. Uh, so that's a standard zoom, but you probably can't see anything with that, which is why I'm going to zoom in as much as I can without losing uh, the cards off the bottom of the screen there. Okay, so uh, let's talk through the play area. Uh, because I am the corp, this side would be the runner, and if I was the runner, this side would be the corp. Uh, along the top here, it shows you how many cards they have in hand. Uh, the number in parentheses is uh, how many they've got, um, but you can actually see them. It's just a, a visual aid. Um, it's actually quite good. Certainly, if you're going for a flat line, you know you see them down to two cards. You might not notice if it was just a number. Uh, it's a very useful feature. Here's their their heap or where archives will be, the stack or where R and D will be, and this is will be where their ID is. But as I'm not playing anybody else at the moment, uh, there's just that there. Then down the side is all the stats. Uh, you can see how many clicks your opponent has, how much money they have. Uh, how much MU, link, uh, agenda points and such like. You can see the uh, scored agendas or stolen agendas. Um, actually maybe that's something that should be, be changed, that should be stolen area. Uh, but the, the, the points they've scored. And uh, down the bottom is where you will play. Again you've got your ID, and then your R&D, your stack, and archives or heap, and then your grip or HQ. Uh, on the right is the chat box. Uh, hello world, um, and that uh, can be used to, to speak to your opponent. Um, get used to the chat box, it's well worth talking to your opponent, there'll be a number of times when you have to sort something out and, and telling uh, whoever you're playing what you're doing is, is paramount uh, to, to enjoying the game. Um, as the In terms of etiquette, uh, whenever you start a game, um, always worth saying hello and good luck. Um, I tend to, I'll almost open with hi GL, GL short for good luck. Uh, some people will be GLHF, good luck, have fun. Um, other people will, will speak to you, um, saying whatever, and other people yet will not say anything. Now it's just uh, you know, nothing against them. Uh, you'll be playing against people from all over the world on here. Maybe their English isn't so good. Um, or, or similarly, if you're playing somebody in, in Spanish or Italian or French and you can't uh, communicate very well. Um, it's not too rude, but it's always best if you can just, you know, wish your opponent luck before you start. Certainly online, you don't get the handshake and you don't get the, the visual feedback. So um, that is worth doing. Um, so even if you're not in the mood for chat, definitely say hi, good luck uh, before starting. Uh, the chat box will also have a record of everything that is going on. So if you ever need to refer back to what has been happening, um, the chat box will record the last sort of five or six turns at least, uh, and you can scroll up and down to see what was going on. <clears throat> uh, I've gone over the, the table layout, and you'll see the first thing here is this uh, option coming up for keep hand. So this is where you need to decide whether you want to keep or mulligan. Uh, as the corp player, uh, you should always choose first, and that goes in real life as well. Um, once you've chosen whether to keep or mulligan, and I'm just going to keep here, uh, your opponent will do the same. 
and that will pop up in here. So as I said, the, the chat box is a log as well in order for you to see what's going on. So once your opponent will say, you know, your opponent keeps their hand or your opponent mulligans, then you're good to start uh, your turn. <coughs> Excuse me. The start turn option uh, is the only one that's highlighted. You can't really do anything else. So simply clicking on that will start your turn. And that's going to load up. Uh, as the corp, you're going to get your mandatory draw. You're then going to get your three clicks. Uh, you start with the five credits and, and your actions also pop up here. So your standard actions are purge. Uh, that will take all three of your clicks. Uh, trash resource, that will only be highlighted if the runner is tagged, draw to let you draw a card, and gain credit just to click for a credit. Um, so pretty straightforward so far. Um, if you don't want to do any of these actions, of course, you can also play a card, and that is then the main part of the game. You see here uh, in the gold borders, um, all the cards are highlighted. That's because all of them can be played. If I was on fewer credits, um, then the things that I couldn't play would not be highlighted. Uh, the only trick for that is if you've got any play discounts, uh, the game checks your credit balance for the cost, um, but let's say I was able to install something for, for one credit less, um, the game will still let you, but it won't be highlighted. So there's a, a small anomaly uh, for to be aware of. So, um, I'm going to do a little something here, and I'll come on to, to what this is. I'm going to, because I'm only playing myself, I'm going to give myself, like, 15 clicks. And I'm going to give myself, uh, 20 credits. Uh, forgot to put the space in. Credits, 20. Credit, 20. Credits, 20. Credit, 20. Uh, you'll see there that that's come up with a little exclamation mark. Now you can do that, and it's a good way of fixing errors, which we'll come on to. Um, but it certainly makes sure that your opponent's aware that you're doing it. You can't do that and just kind of give yourself five credits when nobody's looking. It's going to be logged, and, and they're going to see. So uh, you shouldn't be cheating anyway, but this will make sure that your opponent is aware of it. Uh, I'm also going to give myself some cards, so let's draw 15 cards. That should be enough to get started. So you see now that this has actually filled up my HQ. If I want to see what a card is, I can hover over it and that will produce the uh, uh, the pop-up. Uh, I don't quite know what to call it. The the embiggened picture. Um, and you can just highlight each one individually to, to see what they do. And just scroll over that way. So the first thing is, if you want to play a card, all you have to do is simply click on it. Um, So, the, yeah, let's go with playing an operation. I want to play Beanstalk Royalties. All I do is click on it. The effect immediately happens. It gives me the, the four credits. So the three credits for Beanstalk Royalties and the one credit because it's a transaction for my ID. Uh, if there were any other options, a secondary menu would pop up. So let's try and play um, and, and something that will do that. So if we want to play some ice, clicking on roto turret there. The secondary option is where do you want to put that ice? So I can create a new remote or I can put it on one of the centrals. And as more remotes are created, more options will pop up there and they'll all be numbered so you know which one it is. So I'm going to put roto turret on archives because I'm funny that way. Um, and you'll see that that's installed face down. I used up one of my clicks. I had 15 clicks. First click there, second click to install. And if you ever get confused about what you've installed face down, you can hover over it and again that will embiggen uh, in the corner uh, and that only applies to you. The, the others, your opponent cannot see your face down cards, um, which is good. So they can't just hover over it and see. Um, let's then show you how to res ice. Um, now the game will allow you to res ice at any point. Uh, as long as you've got the credits for it. However, when playing the game, obviously the same restrictions apply as in real life. The, the runner has to be approaching the ice, um, or you must have something else that will let you uh, res it. But for I want to res this ice, there's no nothing fancy or, or tricky about it. So simply clicking on it, I'll pay the res cost, and that ice is now resed. Um, 
pretty straightforward as far as that goes. Uh, if you ever <clears throat> mistakenly click on it and raise the ice, if you click on it again, uh, the options for the subroutines and abilities uh, appear, but also the de-res option. So if you ever raise something by accident, you can simply de-res it again, and then you can uh, fix that error by giving yourself the, the credits back. So Rotator it costs four, and give myself four credits back just by clicking on these plus or minus buttons. But again, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about fixing mistakes because there will be some manual manipulation you have to, to get used to. Although a lot of it is very automatic. So let's say I had, must have an ice wall or something here. So let's install ice wall over HQ. And then let's say I want to install a, a data raven over HQ as well. Uh, same thing. Um, and the game will automatically deduct the, the one credit for the, the install cost. Um, so we know this is ice wall. Uh, ice wall has the ability where it can be advanced. So you may... To use ice abilities, same thing, you have to click on it. When I click on it there, it gives me the option, do I want to res it or do I want to advance it? Now in this instance, I wish to advance it, um, though at some point I may want to to res it. Then let me res roto turret again here. If the, the runner ran into roto turret and couldn't break it, I would want to resolve the subroutines. To resolve a, a subroutine on a piece of ice, again, just click it and the options will appear. The, the two subroutines there. Um, in order to fire a subroutine, you just select it, trash a program. Uh, there's nothing to choose from, so just done. Otherwise, the, the options will appear uh, in a list. And similarly, end the run will end the run. If the ice was just uh, ice wall, what you'll find is you might res it and the runner will just bounce off. They'll jack out rather than, than force you to click on the ice and do it. And that's fine. Uh, it's the most common way as long as it doesn't affect the game state in any other way. Uh, and finally, let's just res Data Raven here. Um, I'm not going to trace because the opponent won't be able to choose to do anything. Um, but the on encounter effect, uh, give the runner one tag. That happens as well there. Uh, similarly with uh, Tollbooth, where I to do that, I could force the runner to lose three credits. Uh, so all very straightforward to use. Uh, the only thing to remember is communicate with your opponent or make sure you know your timing structures are are correct. Um, things along those lines. Uh, when the runner runs, res the ice, give them a chance if they want to do anything. And if you are going to fire any of the subroutines, just uh, go into the chat and just confirm with them, you know, fires or, uh, you know, lose three, uh, whatever. Uh, give them a chance to react before you go ahead and uh, change the, the board state in any way. So that's uh, quite straightforward, I think. Then let's have a look at assets. Um, security subcontract, great card, negative. Um, I'm going to install that. Now, because that was the first asset I installed, it has to go in a new remote. It didn't give me a choice. Um, let's say I was to install a second asset, if I have one. Um, I don't. Let's draw, draw. In fact, well, let's install a, a, an agenda. Uh, same thing. Uh, now this time I have the choice to install any new remote or over the top of the asset that I just installed. So let's install that into server 1. Now the game realises that that is uh, an illegal state. You can't have an asset and an agenda in the same uh, remote. So it trashes the first one that was there. Um, which is fine, you'll see also upgrades. Uh, now this upgrade can only be installed in HQ, so it won't ask me where. If I click on it, it'll immediately install it into HQ. And there you can see on the uh, centrals that the uh, upgrades overlap, whereas on the remotes, you won't know whether it's an upgrade or a, a an asset, just like in the, the real game. Um, in order to res an asset, let me... Uh, I'm going to dig that back out of archives there. Uh, to res an asset, it's exactly the same as resing ice. Uh, just click on it. Um, if there's no uh, ability, uh, then 
there won't be any other options, but if the asset has an ability, much like the subroutines, simply click on a card to use it. Uh, so I'm going to trash a rezzed piece of ice, I'm going to get rid of Roto Turret there, get myself some money back, and then I'm going to, I need some more clicks, so clicks, then, oh, click 10. Um, and that's as simple as that. The agendas, all you have to do is click to advance them. Uh, if the if it's an agenda, your only choice is click to advance. If it's an advanceable asset, the choice will come up whether you want to advance or um, raise. Um, once you've put the number of advancement tokens equal to the score cost, the choice will then be do you want to over advance or do you want to score it? So you can over advance it, uh, I've never over advanced a hostile takeover before, uh, but then whenever you have a, a suitable window you may also click on it to score. When you score an agenda it just gets moved to your score area, your agenda points will go up and in this instance my bad, bad publicity goes up because of the uh, agenda ability. Um, so again, fairly straightforward. Now a couple of anomalies you'll need to get used to. Um, servers won't always go to the end, uh, so they won't continue to build across to the right. At some point, and I think once you get to 10 servers, it's going to put 11 after 1. So it'll go 1, 11, 2, 1, 11, 12, 2. Um, that may get changed in the future. At the moment, uh, just be aware that it is a new server. The servers are numbered uh, in ascending order, so the, the last one that was installed is always the highest number. Uh, but make sure you're aware of what you're doing when you want to uh, click on something in that, asset, uh, in that server or if you're making a run uh, as the runner. Um, now, as I mentioned, mistakes will happen. You've seen me fix a, a few things there. Uh, if you hover over your your thing on the the left, uh, you can do very simply plus or minus whatever the 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 thing is. Um, so increase or demand the you know the the corresponding value. You can't do that for your opponent. They'll have to do that themselves. And similarly, I can't add or remove tokens to cards, um, data sucker or any anything with a power to token, I can't do that manually. If the game state ever gets so mixed up with those, then you just have to remember with your opponent whether there is or isn't one extra on there. Uh, clicking on a card, so I've clicked on that, let's say I didn't want to do anything with it, simply click on the same card again and that will go away. As long as it's just this pop-up menu, that will happen. If ever you click on something and this menu pops up um, with an additional action, uh, then you have no choice but to see out the action and then revert the, the, the action afterwards. So if I was to click on, no I can't click on see source because nobody's on the other end to uh, get rid of the trace. So there's that. Uh, if you install something by mistake, uh, you'll see me have dragged out of archives there, but you can also drag it from uh, wherever it is back into your hand. Um, you see when you drag it back, you'll either get a little rectangle which signifies you can do that, or you'll see the no symbol uh, which signifies you cannot. Um, you can drag things straight into archives if it gets trashed, for example, but doesn't uh, magically do it. If you use an event like Forked or Spooned, that doesn't currently work, you just have to drag it in there yourself. Um, similarly, if something like Wetos Gang Member gets played, you can you can de-res something, same way as I, I mentioned before. Um, and then if you need to give yourself the credits back, then you can just do that by doing plus or minus. If it is a large number of credits, uh, you may want to use some of the cheat commands that I've been typing in here, but I'll leave those in the comment section or the video description. Um, not a lot of people use them and people will get a little bit confused. So if you can, sort it out using the, the plus or minus symbols. Um, similarly, you can also discard from your hand into archives or you can discard 
or put cards back on top of R and D. If you if you've overdrawn, you can always put a card back um, just by dragging it over. So um, as I mentioned, those those extra commands I'll put into uh, the the description. Um, I'm going to give myself click zero. So it takes me them. You'll then see once you're done with everything, uh, you can click end turn. Um, if I was to click end turn now, my maximum hand size is five, and I've got uh, eleven cards, so it won't let me. It's going to ask me to discard down to my maximum hand size, and then to do that, just choose what you want and drag it over. Um, Do, 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 do. There you go, and tear you down to five cards. Again, number in the parentheses tells you how many you've got, but you can also count that quite straightforward. Um, and then click end turn to finish your turn, and that will signify to the runner that they can click start turn to start their turn. Uh, now, I'm not going to click it because if I were to click it, this leave game would disappear um, until they started their other turn. There's a couple of times when the game won't let you leave. If you ever get stuck in a game, you can just refresh the page in order to, to leave. Uh, but wherever possible, you can always leave a game by coming out there. Uh, so the gameplay, uh, I'm not showing a run. Uh, if you watch some of the other videos, you actually see it, the, the sequence of a run. Um, but if you can play the, the game normally, it will be very straightforward for you. So I'm going to leave this game. And then I'm going to start a new game. Uh, again, no spectators. And this time I'm going to go to the, the runner side. It's almost identical. Um, it's just clicking cards to, to use them. Uh, once you've played a couple of games, it's not going to be particularly difficult. And then start this game. So same thing, assume the, the corporation has chosen whether to keep or not, I will also keep. Uh, then let's just give myself 15 credits and let's give myself 5 clicks, that's only 1 extra click, never mind. Um, that's fine, so chosen to mulligan, then I'm going to click uh, start turn. Now this sometimes happens, uh, the game is stuck in the last state of the game you've played. If that ever happens you might end up with uh, the, the setup that you had um, previously, the last game you played you might have the, the your end game set up. Uh, if that happens just apologise to your opponent and, and leave the game again and uh, start a new one. So that's something that can happen. Uh, it doesn't happen particularly often. I'm not quite sure what causes it. Uh, but probably not ending my turn and, and leaving the game. Confused it a little there. Let's just make sure people know that this game is a private game again. Then swap sides because I want to be the runner. And then I'll just choose this Haley deck. And start. So here we are. Uh, if I keep my hand again, discard five cards. Uh, the game is not enjoying my uh, leaving without liking it. So if if the game ever gets to this point, all I'm going to do is uh, Control F five. Um, that's going to refresh the page. Hopefully, lose the information that was stored. Oh well, at least it's come up during the tutorial. Uh, you're not going to be stuck. If it happens to you, it's a new game, no spectators, private, create, oops, swing and a miss. If anybody knows how to prevent Firefox from doing that, let me know. Uh, swap sides, select deck, I'll, I'll choose somebody else in case that was the problem. Start the game and if I keep this hand done. Okay, so the game uh, is waiting on the corporation to do something, so I'm just going to give myself some clicks. Maybe that's what the, the problem was uh, last time. So now I have five clicks. No, click five. Be just as quick uh, doing that to get the clicks in this instance. Uh, and then if I draw ten. Okay, so now I've got all these cards. Same thing, if you want to play an event, just click on it. 
if you want to play a, a resource or a program just click on it for Kate's discount that's built in simply do it it will tell you in the the notes the the cost is reduced by one if I didn't have enough money for it for example then um, it wouldn't have been highlighted so here I've only got one credit you'll see that things that cost more than one credit are no longer highlighted if I had three credits and I hadn't installed a program I could still install Lady even though it wasn't highlighted so it's always worth doing the game will still allow it whereas it won't allow me to install another because I don't have uh, any credit so behind the scenes uh, it knows but uh, on the display it doesn't um, if a, an ability has uh, or if a card has an ability you just have to click on it to use it if it has multiple abilities a pop-up will appear and let you um, choose which one you want to use just give myself more clicks do that sure gamble now the options for the runner are remove tag uh, only going to highlight uh, or be clickable uh, when you have a tag uh, run uh, I'll click on that in a minute. Draw and gain credit, which you've, you've kind of seen me use a little bit there. Uh, when you choose to run, you choose which server you want to run on, whether that's one of the centrals or as more and more remotes are, are built, the, the options will appear. Uh, if I was to make a run on R&D, even though there's nothing there, uh, an arrow will appear on the server that's being ran on. And this arrow will go to the first piece of ice protecting that server, uh, if there is any. Uh, at that point the corporation has the opportunity to raise the ice and then it falls back to the runner in order to break the ice. Now to use an, a breaker, it's the same as using any other of the cards, simply click on it and choose what you want to do. Uh, if it's a, a breaker with multiple abilities, um, like Lady, uh, you can choose one to click to add strength and then click to break the barriers and that is the same for all the uh, all the programs, all the breakers. Um, if it only, if it's something like Atman, which is fixed strength, uh, then the only clicking on it simply breaks. Uh, there's no option to do anything else with it. So mimic, yog, uh, Atman. Um, so as, as soon as you click on it, no choices. It just uh, goes to to break subroutine. Um, then if you break the subs. Um, then the corporation has a, a button to press that says uh, no more action uh, and then this will highlight with continue uh, you can then choose to continue or jack out if, if the first bit of ice you hit was too bad so you don't want to go on you can jack out uh, if you do can choose to continue then it goes back to the corporation they can raise the next piece of ice um, same thing again if you have breakers you can use it um, if it gets to the point where you can't break whatever you run into uh, generally the corporation should ask before they, they fire the subroutines I'll just come up and chat uh, fires and you'll be like yeah okay um, and then bad things will happen to you uh, um, and then you'll get to here uh, the corp will finally have no access, uh, no actions, and you'll be able to click successful run. Now, if you're running on a central, uh, you'll automatically access however many cards you are entitled to. Um, if you're running on a remote, you choose the order uh, of which you access. Now, similarly, if there's an upgrade in the centrals, you can choose whether to access the upgrade or access the card from hand. Um, or, or from the deck or, or whatever it is. Uh, so the runs are really the, the trickiest part of the board state to maintain. Uh, the best advice I can give is communicate with your opponent in the chat. Um, Jinseki.net is actually quite clever. Let's say I was running into um, curtain wall. I'd be able to click on this and it would say match strength of curtain wall five credits. Um, and you can click that. So you don't just have to add one, add one, add one, add one. It'll match whatever strength this arrow is pointing to. Um, and your strength totals are, are tracked as you see there so anything like Gordian where it keeps its strength that's going to keep highlighted any modifiers to the ice that's also going to be highlighted if there's a parasite on it there'll be another box telling you how many uh, what strength the ice currently is at um, if you want to see a run in action then I recommend watching uh, one of the other videos that I've done um, see how the timing structure works and how people interact. It's not 100%, you know, hard and fast rules on how to 
to do it. Um, one thing that you, if you run into something that's only got an end of run subroutine and you're bouncing off it, uh, as the runner, you can jack out just to signify you're not doing anything. Uh, and you know, 99 times out of 100, that's not going to change the the what the corp was doing at all. Um, there's a few cards, I guess, that will want you to be running in order for them to, to do something. Um, but really, the only differences between the corp and the runner are kind of the, the differences in the game. Simply click on a card to use it, uh, click on a card from your hand to play it, and then click on a card that's down to use it, and you can click on your actions to do stuff. Um, and that's basically it. So you can really have a, a game from there. Uh, a few things just wanted to, to point out, you know, etiquette, uh, don't be a dick is the, <laughs> the only real rule. Uh, after you finish the game, go into uh, chat, you know, GG, even if it wasn't a GG, even if you just totally steamrolled them or you just got entirely shut out or they've done some cheese tactics just to, to beat you uh, or, the, you know, the 12 card combo that you never saw coming and you feel hard done by. Uh, GG stands for good game and, you know, just to signify you're aware the game is over and, you know, you know ill grudges for against your opponent. Uh, not everybody hangs around to chat after the game is done. Um, some people just be GG and leave. Certainly if they're in the huff that will happen or if they're in a hurry that will happen. Um, but if you want to hang around for a minute, see if anybody's willing to chat, you know, maybe you, something cool came up during the game uh, and you want to talk about it. Um, sometimes, you know, it's nothing worse than, oh, you know, you nearly had me, man. That was really close. I really liked your deck. Uh, and by the time you've typed that, they've left. Uh, you're like, oh, okay. Um, while playing, if you're taking a long time to think, type that into the chat box as well. Uh, don't leave people guessing if you've gone to answer the door or rage quit or disconnected. Um, if the opponent has a way of reacting to something you've done, always pause, give them uh, a chance to react or, or even better, ask them if they want to do anything. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't want to do that um, with clot and such like, but it's much harder to roll back something on here than it is in real life. So, uh, if you can, give them the chance to react. If you're the corporation, always ask before firing subs, even if you don't think your opponent can do anything about it, you you know, you might be surprised. Uh, sure, it's fine if it's a, an end of run um, where there's nothing out, then fine, that's obviously going to end the run. Um, if you have to roll it back, you can also always let the runners run straight through ice, they don't have to break it again um, until you get to the same state where you were. Um, if you get disconnected, uh, head over to the general chat. Now, uh, you can actually flick between the chat and your game, it doesn't doesn't end your game. And just mention in the chat you got disconnected, apologise, um, and, and see if your opponent wants to, to pick up another game, or uh, if you think your opponent's left as well, head over into chat and see if they've uh, said, oh, you know, uh, disconnected, had a blackout, uh, you know, kids threw up on the computer, uh, something along those lines. Uh, and try and avoid complaining in here. If if, if you've had a bad opponent, if, if something's, uh, you know, you've had a rage quitter, or you've had uh, somebody that's just, like, uh, argued, you know, black is white, they've got the rules entirely wrong and they refuse to play and they quit the game, uh, try not come on here and just, you know, vent about it, uh, accept it, uh, you know, this, this bad sportsmanship that it is, move on to the next game, sure it sucks but there's nothing you can do, um, apart from Azogar, A-Z-O-G-A-R, uh, he's a known troll, he will deliberately break the board state and quit when he's losing. So it's okay to come on and complain about Azogar. Um, everybody does it. Uh, so that's it. Uh, go sign up, get involved. Um, very simple system to use. Uh, if, if you can play Netrunner, you can almost certainly use Jinseki.net. Uh, load up your decks, play a game. Um, let people know. If it is your first game, you can also organise to play in the chat. I just tell people hey guys, it's my first game, do you mind uh, talking me through or, or bearing with me while I play? And similarly, you can also create a room um, in the play, oh, let me leave this game again, um, where 
you can put in the name beginner's game uh you know take it easy for me or take it easy on me or, or looking for uh, here this fella here so scuba's get first game here maybe slow you know if he's never used the system before uh, people were generally quite happy to to talk you through it and if they're not then they'll avoid your game so uh you know just just helps everybody there so that's it uh hope to see you on here i'll uh, hopefully even record a game uh or two with you and in the words of ben's channel happy net running <laughs>